Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the intro video. And the cool thing about that video is that it was taken 100% out of the sim. No post-processing, Sony Vegas, FS recorder, or anything fancy. I just shot it out of the sim. And it was really only possible because of the amazing tool that we'll be looking at today, which is Chase Plane by FSFX Packages. So the funny thing about FSFX Packages is that they really only burst into the scene a couple of years ago. And they came with this product called Precipit FX. And the reason it was so wildly popular is because on top of uh, doing a couple of things for uh, everything from contrails to, you know, break effects while on the ground, um, most importantly, that product changed the way that rain was rendered in FSX and P3D, which really got everybody's attention. Then they started up in the ante and doing stuff like the 737, 777, A320, Learjet, the Q400 immersion packages that completely transformed the way that our already high-end uh, aircraft looked, especially from the outside, and behaved in the sim. And then they did something that a lot of folks didn't really expect. But if you think about it, it actually made sense. They have clearly demonstrated a unique level of acumen in modifying these simulators and all the variables that go along with them. And because of that, it makes sense that such a talented team would come in and would do Chase Plane. And Chase Plane is really a product that I'm sure everybody has a brief idea of what it does so far, at least. But... If you think about it, it's really a long overdue modern way of controlling the global cameras in our simulator. Now, of course, there is EasyDock, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it because, you know, everybody who's interested in EasyDock already knows what it is and how it works and, more importantly, what its limitations are. But rather, we're going to take a look at some of the unique things that Chase Plane does. We'll look at its graphical user interface, and then we'll take a short flight with it, and I'll give you guys my impressions. Now, first of all, this is an early build. I've been using the alpha for a few weeks now, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just walk through the install process. I'll show you guys a quick key configuration, and then I'll set up the rest of the keys behind the scenes, and then we'll actually go out and fly. So first of all, when you open up your FSFX packages um, hub, what you'll see is uh, all the products that you have installed. So once you buy Chase Plane, you'll see it here as well. Go ahead and click the direct install and we'll go ahead and download it and you'll see how small the package is because it downloads and installs very very quickly so cool there it is let's go ahead and close that out and let's go ahead and open up chase plan so now chase plane is going to go ahead and tell us that it wants to configure some preferences so let's go ahead and do that terms and conditions i agree to all that and then the simulator configuration just go ahead and hit proceed. Do you want to auto launch with your simulator? Now, this basically means that when you launch your sim, do you want Chase Plane to launch along with it? I like a little bit more control, so I'm actually going to select now. And then do I want it to manage the affinity masking um, or use dynamic CPU assignments to figure out which core is most suitable to run Chase Plane? And uh, we'll go ahead and say yes. So here you'll normally see some uh, tutorials and of course this is the alpha um, so it's an early build and the tutorials probably aren't even uh, finished but we'll go ahead and skip it just because I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you anyways so before we launch a sim really all we see is our presets if I had any here and then I see preferences so let's go ahead and take a quick look through this so um, we'll be going to the experimental version a little bit later obviously this will not be relevant to the release candidates um, show what's new after every update. So basically whenever the sim gets, I'm sorry, the program gets updated, you'll be able to see it. Default to always on top of your sim. Um, vast use and vast remaining. That basically means will it read out vast for you. Automatically send crash usage information to uh, FSFX. And that's great because in case it does crash or you get a problem, um, they automatically get it instead of, uh, you know, have you having to go through some form or something like that to uh, deal with it. Um, they'll be able to get it. Um, Here's the auto launch options we were just talking about. If the sim was live, you'd be able to see which sims are being utilized. I mean, uh, uh, you'd be able to see which CPU cores are being utilized. In my case, I have eight cores, so you see eight here. 
you see the camera preferences. Do you want the middle mouse button to be your view selector? So in other words, if you hold down the middle mouse button, it will direct the uh, camera inside of the sim um, in the direction of your mouse. Pan and tilt on middle mouse hold. Disable in high vast conditions. Now this is specific to cinematic mode, which automatically switches camera views in a cinematic fashion while you are flying or cruising along um, in a long haul flight. It's a great screen saver if you stream um, on Twitch or YouTube. It's a great way of keeping your audience uh, from getting too bored. Um, but if you continue to switch those camera modes, sometimes you can soak up a little bit too much scenery and uh, can OOM your sim. So um, you have the option to automatically disable that. And then this is a really cool function, pause turbulences on mouse move. I'll show this to you guys in just a bit, but if you've ever flown, let's say a PMDG 737, and you want to finally tune in, um, let's say a uh, ILS frequency, but you're caught up in some chop and you get bounced all over the place, um, it can be really, really difficult to dial in um, or to finally control some of the buttons or some of the knobs inside of uh, your aircraft. And so basically what this option does is that when the mouse moves, it will temporarily disable the turbulence effects that uh, chase plane injects into your sim so that you can have more precise control over, um, you know, fine tuning some of the uh, knobs or buttons uh, inside of your sim. So that's an amazing feature. I love it. I think it's genius. All right. And control bindings. So first of all, you can see that everything's relatively straightforward in terms of what they do. So whether or not you want to do enable on chase plane, toggle inside and outside cameras, which chase plane is able to tell the difference between uh, saving presets, reset camera positions, previous next toggle cinematic mode, and then, you know, everything else makes sense. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys how you can calibrate or configure controls on your keyboard, on a yoke or a joystick, and then also on an Xbox 360 controller, because you guys know I love that. So let's go ahead and look at a key first. So if I wanted to move forward, I can assign any key on my keyboard and or any sort of combination. So I could do numpad 8 or I could even do uh, something like shift and L. So any combination works. All right. And then in terms of a button, let's say I wanted to uh, be able to tilt up. Um, and I want to use my uh, thumb hat on my SciTech yoke. So first of all, let me say that tilting and panning using your uh, joystick hat has never been better. Normally, the only way to get a smooth effect when you're tilting or panning um, using your uh, yoke is if it has a analog input. However, the problem is, is that there is no uh, analog input really on the SciTech yoke. Instead, it's just simply a button that goes in one of um, eight different directions. But here's the thing. Chase Plane is able to smooth out that effect. So you really get the tilting and panning effect that you would with, let's say, an Xbox controller just using your thumbstick, which is, at, or I should say, your uh, top hat control on your SciTech yoke, which is just amazing right if you guys watch some of my early videos you can see where i was using uh the um top hat control on my SciTech yoke and it looked like it always has which is relatively um you know jerky and stuttery um, but they fixed that here and we'll take a look at it in the sim but anyways i digress so if i wanted to do tilt up using my thumbstick or i'm sorry my top hat i keep on calling it thumbstick i would just do that and then check this out it automatically recognizes what the um, opposite is, which is down on the uh, top hat. So if I'm doing up, it sees down as that. And then last, let's go ahead and configure something with the uh, Xbox controller. So let's say we wanted to uh, move up. I can do it with my trigger and then go ahead and have that assigned. So now that you guys have seen that, let's go ahead and uh, jump onto the sim and actually fly with it. All right, so here we are. Our test bed today will be Aero Pelican Airport by Orbix in Australia, and we'll be flying the Coronado TBM 850 because it's an aircraft that gives us good maneuverability along with a lot of power, which will really be able to show off Chase Plane's features. So let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit and get started. All right, 
So here we are on the outside of our aircraft. So a couple of things that I wanted to show you guys before we actually get up in the air. Number one, let's take a quick look at the new menus that we have now that we're actually in the sim. So first of all, if I were to hold down my middle mouse button, you'll see that I not only get contextual menus for the particular aircraft that I have, but also I have certain chase plane controls such as resetting the camera, creating a new camera, saving the camera, and also starting cinematic mode. Also, we can open up the main chase plane interface right here from within the sim. So if we did, you'll see that we have a couple of new things. Number one, we have presets. So here in the presets, I can see the presets that I already have set up for my particular aircraft. If I'd like, I can get additional controls by holding down the control button, and then I can do things um, such as delete the current profiles that I have. If I go down to camera, you'll see that I have a green icon because I have unsaved changes to one of my views. Here, without any use of a joystick, a keyboard command, or an Xbox controller, I can also control chase plane by going forward and backwards, making lateral movements going up and down, panning the aircraft left and right, rolling the camera, tilting it, and also changing the zoom of the focal point. If I wanted to reset any one of these, I can simply double click them and it will reset the views to the defaults either of the particular camera or of chase plane period. Here under Turbulences, I can see all the different effects that can be had on my pilot's head or the aircraft in terms of resonant camera controls. So I can change the acceleration when I put power into the throttles or slow down the aircraft. I can adjust the gyroscopic movements when I pitch and roll and yaw the aircraft. I can control how much the engine rumble affects the camera. I can change the blast area, which is basically the blast area behind the engine. In this case, we have a turbine, so we'll take a quick look at that. I can affect, I can change the effects of the ground, the wind, also can introduce random human head movements and anticipation, which is basically the pilot's head getting it ahead of the uh, movements of the aircraft. So I can also go down to aircraft and down here, there's nothing really to see now, but I can uh, adjust these two things in later builds, which will be doors and walls. Basically what those do is they create triggerable points for a particular aircraft. So for example, if you were in the cockpit of the 737 NGX and you wanted to go out to the passenger cabin, you can have it set so that when you uh, have your camera approach the door from the cockpit, it'll automatically switch to the external model and you'll be able to go into the galley or do a walk around around the aircraft um, all seamlessly without having to manually change um, the cameras. Walls also just create basically borders within a particular field. So if you're inside of the uh, cockpit and you didn't want to have the ability to clip outside of it, you can set up walls inside of a particular cockpit. Community is where you'll be able to share your profiles, and then you guys also have seen preferences already. So just real quickly while we're here on the outside of the aircraft, let's set up a new view. So what we'll go ahead and do is uh, I will go into my current presets, and let's go ahead and delete this particular camera. Now, let's say I wanted to have a camera where I could see the rumble effects from being behind this turbine. So if I get myself close enough, you can see that here I'm getting a decent amount of rumble. So let's back it out so that it's not as violent. So there you go, got just the right amount of rumble there. And if I wanted to, I could either create a new camera here uh, within the contextual menu, or I can also do it manually through chase plane. So we'll go ahead and create a new camera and we will call it uh, rumble, or we'll just call it rum. There we go, great. So now I have my uh, view saved. And if you look, it's also here inside of my contextual menu. Let's go ahead and go back into the cockpit. All right, so here we are inside of the cockpit. And if you guys uh, take a look, I'll be able to just look around using my mouse. I can also look around using the top hat on my um, controller. And uh, but we'll go ahead and just use the mouse for right now. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and put on our uh, separators, get rid of that caution, and uh, we'll head on out to the runway. So while we're doing this, um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and keep the uh, menu open so that you guys can see the effects that are being had on the aircraft. So if we uh, take a look, when we start to roll, I can increase the uh, ground control to give ourselves more rumble as we move around on the ground. So as you guys can look, the dashboard is moving quite a bit because we're here in the rough grass. And if I wanted to, same concept as the camera controls, I can just double click, just reset it back to default. 
As you guys can see, I uh, bumped up my acceleration, my gyroscope, and my engines so that you guys hopefully can see a little bit more clearly what's going on. What we'll actually go ahead and do is we'll uh, move the camera a little bit closer to the dash so that you're able to see uh, the effects a little bit more clearly. All right, let's go ahead and make this turn and then we'll get on our way. All right, so now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll uh, introduce power into the aircraft. And if I were to open up my chase plane menu once again, I can increase the engine control. And you guys can see that uh, it'll increase how much um, turbulence my particular engine is giving me. Now, obviously, this is a turboprop turbine, so um, it uh, isn't that violent as, let's say, a, uh, a conventional piston would be. Um, I can also go ahead and change the random head movements here, which is just kind of the swaying of a human head. And then um, my anticipation, we won't be able to see it just yet, but uh, we'll show it up in the air. So let's increase gyroscopic a little bit increase acceleration a little bit and uh, we'll leave engines where they are and let's go ahead and get started so we're going to start our roll here and this is a pretty short runway so hopefully we've got ourselves <laughs> enough uh, enough distance here to get going it's pretty narrow as well so we're going to try to keep ourselves under control here and it's going to be a tight fit See if we can get off the ground. Oh, we're probably right there on the verge of stalling. This aircraft here was not a good idea. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the gear. And if you guys look, as I pull back on the yoke, or as I push forward, you guys can see the gyroscopic movements at play. So let's take a quick look at how some of these uh, settings affect us. So acceleration, obviously, if I were to crank this up and I were to pull the throttle back, which is not a good idea at this altitude, but we'll do it anyways, you guys can see how my head lurches forward. That's because the aircraft is decelerating. If I were to push in the power, you guys see my head starts to move backwards because obviously the aircraft is accelerating. So let's go ahead and reset that. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at the gyroscopic motion. So I don't want to turn this up too high, but if I were to bank left, oh, I mean uh, bank right or bank left, you guys can see just how exaggerated it is at this setting. But at least you guys get the idea of what it does. Holy smokes. So obviously that's a very unrealistic setting, but if we were to turn it down, it becomes a little bit more realistic. Anticipation is exactly the opposite. So it's basically the head of the pilot moving ahead of the aircraft. So as you guys can see, my head is basically moving ahead of the aircraft's movements. And it can get pretty exaggerated. Um, random we already looked at, uh, engines and gyroscopic we already looked at, and then we already saw the ground. So the last thing I want to take a look at is one of the greatest features, which is the uh, static camera or the global camera. Now, EasyDoc obviously already had a uh, static camera of sorts, but the problem with it was was that it was uh, very finicky. It didn't really work that well in too many sims, and it was um, a little bit difficult to get uh, to work consistently. So the other difficult thing about it was, was that it didn't allow the user to have very fine controls um, based on uh, you know the particular speed that you wanted to ca the camera to move at. So what I mean by that is that if I wanted to uh, make a fast shot or a fast pan shot versus a slow one, I would have to go into the actual controls of Easy Dock to um, adjust the speed of my camera. Well, now that we have analog controls with the Xbox controller, that's no longer an issue. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, static camera. All right, so here we are inside of our static camera. And one thing that you'll notice is that if I wanted to get, let's say, go back over here towards the port, um, I can adjust on the fly how fast or how slow that I'm moving. So let's go on down here to, let's say, uh, one of these boats. So as I come down here to one of these boats, Normally, if I wanted to go faster or slower around this boat to adjust to its particular movements, I would have to go into Easy Dock and uh, change its speed. But I don't have to do that now. So you can see I can come in very, very quickly towards this boat. And then I can, oh, so I hit the water. And then I can slow myself down 
to this to this boat's particular speed. I can pretty much match it completely on the fly using my Xbox controller. Look how well I can track that. And then if I wanted to go fast again, I can simply go fast. It's absolutely amazing having these camera controls, especially for cinematic um, filmmakers or even just folks who want great screenshots or just to have fun uh, checking out some uh, new airports. You can do it completely on the fly um, right there using your Xbox controller instead of having to rely on um, changing your uh, motion speeds constantly. Look how fine of control we can get here panning around this, this boat. There's a little bit of stutter right now because we're actually flying our plane, so um, it's still giving us some uh, motion uh, effects, but if I were to turn those off, the camera would be completely smooth. Absolutely amazing. And so just to that last point, if I did want to change um, the speed of my particular inputs, I can do that here in the advanced menu. So I can change the motion speed, which is basically the up, down, left, right, the motion inertia, which is how long it takes for the camera to come to a complete stop after the control input is no longer uh, um, put in. Uh, the gyroscopic speed, which is basically the um, you know rolling and the yawing, etc., and then the inertia for that. Um, right now, there's not there's a, a feature that doesn't work just yet called gimbal, which basically allows the camera to completely stabilize. Um, relative to the horizon instead of relative to what the aircraft's um, pitch uh, um, or bank is. And then also we have this thing called the framing overlay, which is great for folks who like to take screenshots. And uh, basically what it does is that it gives you a DSLR viewfinder sort of view so that uh, you can frame your shot um, very easily. And it does not show up when you take uh, screenshots um, or if you're in OBS or something like that. So if I wanted to you know, get the perfect shot for this scene, I could do so. I'll go ahead and hit the V key here. All right, well, I hope that you guys enjoyed my first look at Chase Plane. And uh, as more features develop, we'll come back and take a look. Um, but also, it'll be available for a public beta here relatively soon. So I definitely recommend you go out and get it. It's just the best camera control option out on the market right now. Thank you guys so much, as always, for joining, and take care.